books. <laughs> yeah. Hey, look. What do you know? Our shoestring operation held together with duct tape and command hooks is back on the air. Back on the air. Oh, I got a little ping. I guess that means we are live. We are live. Welcome, everyone, to the next episode of The Foley of Man, Season 3. Cut the cork, motherfuckers. It's another freaking season. Hell yeah. <laughs> That's right. Only the finest cheap champagne that money can buy. All right, are you are you ready? I'm yeah, gonna, I'm ready. Look, how fitting would it be? How fitting would it be if I pop the cork on this and it just sprays champagne on all of the electrical equipment that we have? I feel like have. It would, what it would do is what a way it would knock up on the ceiling and then take out the camera. What a way to go! Yeah, like live on the air. Like there's no mystery about the suicide. No. All right. Oh, I'm noticing some new names. Hello, Tinker. No, Tinker's been on on the uh, and uh, Aslex. As like, yeah, yeah, but I mean, but people who are in the comments yeah. that have not, I'm not on the Discord every day. I will say, though, before I pop the cork on this, um, I do check the Discord every day, but there's a lot of conversations and I'm like, eh, y'all don't, I don't need to get it. I don't need to get in this. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like good old Uncle Robert shows up with a dick joke and disappears into the ether. Hello, Nawat. Hello, why did All six, right, six. Here we go. Season three. I if I get the sound. Of it. Whoa. Oh, I guess we don't need the towel. Towel's gone. It's because I know what I'm doing with a bottle of champagne, which I don't know if that means I'm a classy mother effort or if I uh, am an alcoholic, but por que no los dos? Ah, it's El Dorado. Hello, El Dorado. El Dorado. So, would you join us all for a nice celebration? Are we going to have a toast? We're going to have a toast. A toast? For the ghost with the most? I need, the to, I, I need to remember to get like back in the... Uh, and no, these aren't champagne flutes. We don't have any money, okay? We're making do with standard wine glasses. Yeah, this, isn't, this isn't even really champagne. I think it's classic. It has to technically be a sparkling wine. Oh, it says California champagne because we don't regulate the word champagne in the United States. Nope. USA. USA. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, kids, France may have invented, uh, invented the vehicle, but they also invented front-wheel drive, which takes That's away right. every single aspect of that creation. Take that, you cheesy surrender monkeys. <laughs> All right. I propose a toast. To uh, to the end of the world. To the end of the world. To the end of the world. Yes, Celestia, be damned. Mm -hmm. mm, mm, mm. Oh yeah, that is good and brute. Brute. <laughs> yeah, that is nicely good. chilled. That's some good good. You know, it's very well chilled. Yeah, it's very well chilled. But uh, it is the finest cooks uh, champagne. Um, you know, that's what I really long for one day, for us to really hit it big and get bottom medium shelf champagne. If we can get up to Corbell status, if we can just get to Corbell oh, status, God, we'll have made great. it. I don't I, I don't even I'm not a dreamer, man. I'm not looking at like Dr. Could you Caron. imagine could you imagine if we got barefoot Contessa champagne? <laughs> Gross. Oh Jeffrey, I squished the grapes with my own feet. <laughs> Jeffrey likes to watch. <laughs> have you ever actually watched the Barefoot Contessa? I don't no. So I always, she's always talking about Jeffrey like she's like uh, a kidnap victim. And she's always, like, everything is always in reference to what her husband thinks about it. Mm. And so it's like, what what do you have? Do you have like um, um, Stockholm syndrome or something? Mm -hmm. <laughs> she'll, she'll like add extra butter to her ass and be like, don't tell Jeffrey. And it's like, whoa, what are we doing here? <laughs> like, do y'all fuck on food? What are we talking about? No, no. Speaking of fucking on food, uh, there is a lot of uh, of sexual talk in this book. There is. So do we want to just go ahead and get into it? Oh, we should preface. Wow. Um, welcome to the Foley of Man. I am your host, Robert Jones. Oh, oh, last name. What does it matter? Anyway, it's out anyways. And Chris. Chris is here. Yeah, I'm the, here. The, uh, the unlast nameless one. Yeah, uh, which you've already said on stream before, so it doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. Whatever. It's whatever. Hey, it's the magic of showbiz. You just change your name. You could be Obi-Wan Kenobi Celestia uh, Christopher, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, you just add it all together. Oh, you could take my last name. Yeah, I could. That's really going to help all the shippers. Talk of sex, robot named... So, uh -huh. for those of you who may be joining us for episode one of season three of what the hell is this, other than a bunch of weirdos with ponies in the background popping champagne, which, you know, hey, maybe we're just a little extra. Maybe that's what we do every episode. A little extra. Yeah, I know. At least I haven't said yes yet. Oops, there it goes. Um, so, this is the Foley of Man, where we review 
Fallout Equestria fan fiction, which merges the world of Fallout the video game and a My Little Pony and puts them together. Chris here is a brony. I'm not. Not a brony. No. You would not believe after two seasons of this shit, I'm still not a brony. He doesn't like the ponies. I'm not pony averse, but I am not a brony. No. I wouldn't even say I'm defiantly not a brony. Like, I, like, but I'm just not a brony. No. And uh, and the crux of this is that we have read several. We've read the original fan fiction, which is called Fallout Equestria, and then season two we reviewed uh, Pink Eyes, which is another uh, great book in the world of Fallout Equestria, written by yep. Mzinga. And this. Season, uh, which really I should just say this year because this is going to take us forever, mm -hmm. is Project Horizons, arguably the most controversial. It's not arguable at all. It uh, is. I, but just from what I've heard. So it is the most controversial of the uh, Fallout Equestria fan fictions, and it was written by. You ever think you would say that in your entire goddamn life? Nah, but here we are. <laughs> you know? And, uh, but it was written by Somber, so I want to make sure we give credit to the author as yep. well, because that's something that's really important on the show. We are going to give our honest takes on these books. Yeah. Um, and sometimes we don't always have nice things to say, but we do have a tremendous amount of respect for the authors who spent the time to put all of their work into something they will never make a dime off of. Yeah. You know, maybe they can do something at conventions, like they could sign autographs or something, right? They can't keep them from doing that, right? No, no, no. No, um, well, I mean, they don't make any money off the signing autograph signings. I actually, interestingly, when I went to BronyCon, um, there was an impromptu signing with Somber. Yeah. Uh, in the uh, when quills said and sofas room. Said he's a nice guy. Yeah. I mean, that's the one thing I really want to clarify. As much as people argue about this shit, uh, because, <laughs> man, I, I started a fire last week. Um, but as much as there's arguments about this, this is probably one of the most positive fandoms I've ever been around. And that was one of the things that was most surprising to me from the beginning getting in is um, the brony culture is much maligned unfairly. It is unfairly much maligned uh, yeah. because I would say that you as a collective, the, the plural brony, is – Probably one of the most open-minded, friendly, and loyal fandoms I've seen. Yeah. Even as much as y'all might bicker about minor details. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's bickering within, but it's all kept within. It's all kept with kind of a, a smile and a handshake and a wave so, and a hug and a, probably several people doing it. I don't know. The format, as we go, is basically each week, each episode, we kind of wrap up the chapter that we've read, give some of our thoughts on it, have some final little fun stuff near the end of the episode, and I feel like we've danced around it enough. We probably just need to... So let's get right into it, guys. Oh, man, DJ Az is here. <laughs> Hello, DJ Az. <laughs> and uh, everybody else's names that I haven't said hi. Sorry, we'll, we'll get around to it. Everything is ticking by real quick, and we got a real tiny screen over there. Um, Y'all also have noticed, if you're watching us for the first time, this is live. I don't know if we're going to do live every time for this season. We're going to try to move over to a more edited format because it's a little cleaner. And then yeah. what we're going to do is we're going to do edited format and then a follow up afterwards. So what we call wanna... the after show. After show, which means you won't be seeing us um, like during the episode. You'll see it afterwards, but you're still going to uh, you can still ask us questions about what happened in the chapter and things like that. Yeah. Um, so mm -hmm. if you do have any yeah. questions, remember, ask them, either ask them on the stream or ask them below. Yes, I will say, so you, obviously you can comment on our YouTube channel, but the real party, I have to say, because it's, you know, it's, it, I should encourage people to put comments on the YouTube because that's what would drive the algorithm and get more, yeah. more, it doesn't matter. The real party is on the Discord and the Discord is in the description below. And if yep. you're listening to the audio version, the Discord will also be in the description there. So join us. And if you're listening on the audio, check out the video. That's kind of where the fun is. Is at. You can also look at our ugly mugs. I was going to say, yeah, unless you can't stand to look at us, but then you could, you know, just put a bag over the screen while you listen to our sexy FM voices. Uh, so let's get right into this next chapter. All right. So chapter one, Project Horizons. We begin in stable 99. 99. I got 99 pro, 99 ponies, but the overmare ain't one. Actually, but let's get into that in a yeah. minute. I, I would have to. Yeah, we'll get into that one. Yeah, there's one glaring problem in that stable. Sure. Yeah. So we happen upon our protagonist, mm -hmm. our pwn antagonist, protagonist, uh, known as Blackjack. And Blackjack. Blackjack is a security pony in Stable 99. We also know that Stable 99 has exactly 500 ponies. And that it is split apart into females and males. So the females essentially all have rights and jobs. And the males are kept separate, but equal, uh, for breeding. 
purely for breeding. Their breeding stock. And as I understand it, there are only 40 breeding males, correct? Mm-hmm. There are the 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 earth ponies, which are the peas. They're mm-hmm. referred to as peas no, one, no. one through twenty. Oh yeah, peas, sorry. Peas, yeah. Yeah, pony. Right. And then there's the ewes. The yeah. ewes one through twenty, and those are the unicorns. You see, it throws me off. When you hear yeah. pea, for some reason you think like Pegasus, but there's but no know, yeah. there's no Pegasi. So the P stands for uh, regular pony. regular pony. Really, if I had to say one thing, I may have made it E, but I understand why you would call a character P something. Yeah. It might have also uh, conflicted with what information comes later. So we start with Blackjack, and we start as every good story does with her waking up. In the bedroom. In the bedroom. And she is a pig. She's a pig. Oh my god. Even jokingly referring to these empty uh, food containers and and, um, beverage bottles in her dresser as like experiments. Experiments. And she growing her fungal overlords that will one day rule the stable. She takes her stable parting and she actually brings it up and smells it to try to figure out if it's any good. And it's like, nope, no, not that, that one's one. not good and has to pick out a different pair. So she is like, you know, oh, what is it? Uh, what did they say from Cowboy Bebop? A uh, 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 stinky feet otaku. No, no. A, uh, a fat otaku with smelly feet. A fat otaku with smelly feet. Thank you. I knew that you would know that quote better than I would. And we also kind of get hints uh, very, very early on that Blackjack, uh, like Little Pip, is a pervert. (laughs) Yep. Uh, Well, is it really? I guess a little pervert, but like basically just horny as hell. It's interesting. This little unicorn pony is horny. What's interesting is that the the stable itself kind of facilitates this over-sexualized lifestyle. I guess because they are so open to the idea of sex for breeding. And they just kind of expe- expect it that way. And the only way to facilitate your sexual desires is either through signing up for the to be with the breeding stock. Which or, you don't get to do until a certain age. Which you don't get to do until a certain age, and you still have to wait in line. Yeah. Or just do it with somebody, with anyone who's waiting. Yeah, they even mention it later with Midnight that, you know, um, well, Midnight's in the queue, so I don't think you're going to have much of her attention. Yeah. Which was a nice little hint at what would come later. Yeah. But we also, as you say... Everyone, not everyone, that's not fair, but a vast majority of the female ponies um, seem to be bisexual. Yeah. But like you said, the males are used for breeding stock. They check them out like library books. Yep. And um, But in the meantime, I guess they just get bored. This is kind of a sex-fluid environment. Yeah, it's just, you know, it's just whatever. It's part of, it's part of the daily thing because, as it's explained, because all of their jobs are assigned from birth and they assigned hereditarily – Mm-hmm. I would say um, it's just through their, who your parents were. Um, you end up just kind of becoming this miserable shell of an individual. Yeah. And it's even brought up when they talk about one character, um, Scotch Tape. Yeah. And how Scotch Tape is supposed to be taking over for Duct Tape as the chief maintenance officer, I believe. I don't. I didn't think it was chief, but... But it was maintenance. A, it was a, a maintenance, maintenance pony. And they explained... And 150 of the ponies are maintenance ponies. Yeah, and they explained she has no capacity for it. She has... She's a blank flank. Yep. She's still in school. She hasn't, yep. she hasn't learned anything. She is a child. Yep. Um, a foal. A true foal. And what happens? Well, she has to go to work. She has to go to work. And why does she go to work? Because the job... You have to replace her mom's job. She has to replace her mom's job. Yep. Yeah. And that's how it works. And in fact, we find out pretty early on that Blackjack is an awful security pony. But the only reason she is a security pony is because her mom is the head of the security ponies, which also means that not just will she be a security pony, but when her mother dies, she'll be the head of security, which Blackjack states basically is the end of the stable. Yeah. <laughs> We're screwed. Yeah. Because the uh, security ponies have a whole series of spells at, because security ponies, I guess all security ponies are unicorns. Yeah. As I understand. They have a series of spells that, they're, that they have to know how to use. And very similarly, Blackjack only knows levitation. Yep. And levitation. And levitation. And levitation. Uh, a lot like little bit. Yep. You'll start to fall out Equestria. You'll see some analogs between the two early on and they do start differentiating themselves, but very early you will start seeing similarities between the characters. This caused a lot of people to say that Somber was ripping off. And I'm like, I feel like what he wanted to do was try to retell it in his own way and just take the same character and try to alter it to make it a different person, which is fine. You can do that. There's plenty of things that are ripped off in this book. Yeah. Um hooves, tails, uh heads, eyeballs, uh, internal organs. Yeah. 
Those are all ripped off in this uh, book. Yeah. <laughs> and discarded. Yes. But more on that later. Uh, we also figure out early on that Blackjack uh, is not well liked no. by anyone on security. But she's also the, the daughter of the head of security. Yeah. Which means that she is related to their boss, who is apparently, according to Blackjack, a hard ass. As well, yeah. um, she is incompetent, and so they're holding her resentful because she is connect she's connected to that source of power, but also can't be gotten rid of. Yeah. yeah. Well, like, the, uh, the most basic of spells are supposed to know is a manacle spell that produces manacles around uh, your legs. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, Blackjack doesn't know that, and we find that out because a big bully on the security uh, squad, Daisy, Literally a big bully. She is yeah. massive. Her ears almost touch the top of the ceiling in the stable. Blackjack even mentions, like, clearly the designers of the stable did not intend for a pony of Daisy's size. Which raises an interesting question. We've never really talked about... We, we talked about Little Pit being small. But we've yeah. never talked about ponies being absurdly large. That comes in other, in other fictions, or in other uh, side fics. Right. Um, there actually are ponies that you will start, that you will see if we so, don't get into it. Does that mean that there are different breeds of pony besides just like Earth Pegasi? No, and, it's not differentiated out. Because like my first thought was like, oh, she's like a Clydesdale pony. No, there's not differentiations in that regard. It's just they happen to be varying in size. The um, silver, no, Hired Gun, I can't remember what her original name is, but Hired Gun from um, Fall of Equestria Heroes. Mm. She is described as so big that she is considered ugly by many. Mm. Um, and she has such a weight behind her and a heft behind her that she actually manages to take on a steel ranger, a smaller steel ranger, hoof to hoof, and bashes its skull. Jesus H. Christ. Yes. Well, earth ponies are known for their ability to use the kind of earth magics to enhance their strength. Which so. is just strength. Yeah. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> Strong like Silver pool. Storm. That's it. Silver, Silver Storm. Storm. Cool. Cool name. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe after the three years it takes to do this story, we may get to uh, another fanfic. Three years for the next episode? No. Not three. No. 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 You do not need to pray to a god of luck and throw a dart at a calendar to figure out when the next episode is going to be. Damn they want. If you are Damn on, me. if you are on Discord, you will always know when we're going to record because we tell you at least an hour before we do it. <laughs> <laughs> so just and at least an hour before when we're going to cancel. That's also true. Sometimes at the last minute. Sorry guys, I got a rubble in my tum tum. Yucky, yucky, yucky. Yeah right. Uh, this book is going to give you a lot of yuckies in the tum tum. Oh yes. So um, everything in the stable is recycled. Everything in the stable is everything. recycled. People, poop, liquids. Yes. Everything in the stable is recycled. Yep. This is like the, what's her name? Greta Swinberg, Swinberg, whatever. This is like her end goal, right? Like every single thing we produce is like recycled. Okay. Um, now there's actually, and I was going to wait for a little later, but I actually do want to get into it now. Okay. It's your <laughs> show. Um. Let me ask you this. Does it remind you of anything? Does the stable itself and the design and the main protagonist, does it remind you of anything like a movie in which somebody might be running <laughs> and age out at the age of 30? Are you, ta are you talking about either Logan's Run or Soylent Green? Lo or both? Logan, Logan's Run. Yeah. 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 The other thing that we find out is that there is a missing P. And the P's are numbered P1 through 20. So instead of being having names, the males are P1, P2, P3. <laughs> it's so awful. Yeah. But yeah, it really is awful. They are just tools. Um, but furthermore, your number changes as you age. Yep. So you are born P1. But as you age, you become P2, P3, P4, all the way to P20. Well, you might be wondering, what happens to when you have more than 20 males? Well, the... Uh... They have to hunt you down because you're a runner. No, no, no. I know. But they're retired. Sorry, I should do it like hooves. Retired. You almost did the <laughs> caramel dancing ears. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, so kawaii. Uh. <laughs> oh, Chrysidus. Okay, let's No, not Dessa. It'd be like, Chrysu John. Oh, no. That's too let's... cute. Actually, you'd be Chris Coon. <laughs> Oh, no. Kurisu Kun. Please, let's move. Oh, Pony Senpai, why won't you notice me? Uh, we're waiting for Somber Senpai to notice us. My Minga Senpai <laughs> actually did notice us. 
Um, <laughs> Somber, Somber doesn't want to be a part of this. I don't know. Maybe he does. I don't know. I, I, like, Somber's going to be like, huh, isn't that that guy that I met at the convention? God, that fag? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> what a queer bait. <laughs> <laughs> a brony telling you that you are too gay for the fandom is like Charles Manson saying that Scientology was too crazy for him. <laughs> Which he did. Charles Manson, when he was asked what his religion was, he said Scientology and later remitted it and said, no, I had to leave the church. They were too crazy. <laughs> And now we're being sued by Scientologists. Whatever. Fuck anyway. them. Okay, so hey, Celestia over Xenu so any let, day. Let's get uh, let's get into some story here, so we know this doesn't drag on forever. Because this is actually a rather long. Oh, well, there aren't any dragons uh, I've seen around here. <sighs> Doink. All right, fine. Let's get in. I'm just I'm trying to be very detail specific because this chapter is two, long. Is two and a half hours. In the I know we need to, we need to get we need to move. Okay, yeah. so yes. so what we find out is that we actually. After after Blackjack chases some people and gets captured by Daisy and picked on, we do hear a um, the overmayor discussing the nature of of a file with the engineering. Parents. Yes, something that is super encrypted. They and cannot very break the important. Oh, they cannot break the code. Question five. They, they need one of those Navajo code breakers. And so we we learn, and I'm probably just, I'm probably just, just going to is there a, the Jumping around. Sorry. I just speaking of Navajo code breakers, like at any point, because there's lots of this that's kind of like the Wild West. Are there any like Buffalo? Are there any like Native American Buffalo? Pony? The Buffalo or the, the Native Buffalo. Americans? Oh my God. Mm, ponies come. This yes, they way. had a uh, they had a standoff in <laughs> Appaloosa, and uh, they they uh, the two uh, war they the two um, clans clashed mm. in a um, in a pie throwing fight. <laughs> mm. Ponies bring magic to this land. Mm. Destroy everything they take. They do not understand. It's not racist. I'm like 132nd Algonquin, so that's got to count for something, right? Okay, hey! 64th Blackfoot. I was going to say, what do you get with 64 white people in a room? One Native American. Ha <laughs> Zing! We can insult everybody here. Your Instead of Bazinga or something, which, you know, I can't stand uh, the Big Bang Theory, what we should do is say, Mime Zinga. <laughs> Mazinga. <laughs> which I loved when he said that the way he said his name was Mimazinga. And I was like, I would have never said that. <laughs> um, okay. It's all right. We got to move on. Got to move on. Got to move on. Uh, everything's recycled. The food's crap. The stable's falling apart. Yes. The water, the hot water talisman doesn't work. Like everything, like it's just being poorly maintained. Yeah, because the people who are maintaining it are doing so under the force of uh, under the force of just kind of the, the way the system works, and none of them are, are have the capacity to actually do it. Right, because nobody are doing the jobs they're supposed to. Yes, they're doing the jobs which they're forced to do. Yes, yes, yes. Like, thank you, Soviet Russia. I know. Like, it just doesn't. Obviously, it's very poorly managed. But let's face it, every fucking stable was poorly managed. They're yeah. all poorly managed. That's kind of the point. Yes, it's to, to, to well, kill no, ponies. Stable too. One exception. Yeah. Anyways, moving on. Um, so Blackjack is stuck in these manacles, and the only person who, who's willing to help her, because Midnight's like, no, nah, fuck that. I'm not helping you, you dummy. Um, no matter how much uh, she's uh, trying to flatter her. Also, um, we find out that the reason why, so Midnight is another pony, yep. and Blackjack wants to... Uh, Bumpty bump with yeah. her. Even so much to say as I'll help you, or if you help me, I will repay you with oral sex, which yeah. I thought was very forward. Um, but there's a whole snicker, snicker, laugh, laugh, laugh. And uh, one of them says, I didn't realize that you went that way, Blackjack. And Blackjack basically says, eh, it's more that she, um, oh, what was the word? That she so quickly, uh, 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 you know, turns me down. Yeah. I want her because I can't have her. Yeah. You know? So. Oh, Kenpachirama Sama, how can you be so flippant and, and yet so, so desirable? desirable? So her mother is the one who ultimately has to break the spell, the manacles. And uh, it's clear that, again, her mom in moments of quiet and silence, you know, is still looks at her like her little blank flank. Yep. But she publicly reprimands her and says, like, I'm just going to have to teach you later how to do this. Yep. And that time won't come. But anyways, so Blackjack is on third shift. So Blackjack works at night. Uh, shift C mm -hmm. when everyone else is in bed and there is a P21 that has gone rogue 
uh, because he needs to be retired. And Blackjack is like, I don't know why they fight so much. You just get a shot and everything's fine. You go live the rest of your life. Go live the rest, the rest of your life. The rest. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's so funny that in all of this, Blackjack still doesn't realize what retirement is. Yeah. Like has just, uh, it's whatever they told me. They just retire him. And I didn't ask any other questions. Yeah. She's not a clever pony. So she goes down and does her patrols and, you know, yep. is looking for this, you know, miscreant she's supposed to. And uh, also there's kind of this whole thing with, um, she, so many deals I'm missing out. She lets people get away with a lot of stuff mm-hmm. because she's really bad at her job, but she also wants people to like her. Yep. Uh, and the punishment is uh, draconian. It is truly like physical lashing punishments. Yeah. And um, in fact, when she catches two mares doing what they're not supposed to in the showers, um, I'll let you figure that one out. Yeah. Um, she threatens, you know, this could be lashings. And they act like, oh, well, that wouldn't be so bad. And it's like, oh, yeah. Well, what if Daisy was giving them to you? And they're like, absolutely not. Because many of the guards uh, apparently have sadistic pleasure in causing pain. Uh, to other ponies. Yeah. Because they're all cooped up and fucking weird. Yeah. They're all fucked in the head because of this kind of, I guess, social experiment con around. Stable mentality. So um, anyway, then she's not only, uh, she's not only lo- kind of looking for that, but on the side, she's also looking for scotch tape because scotch tape went missing. Um, and the reason scotch tape went missing is because she ran away because now she has to work and she has to work because mommy's gone. Yeah. They retired mommy. So anyways, she's down there. She uses her pit buck to see what's going on. Um, And she actually comes across uh, a pony and then eventually realizes that it's scotch tape. Yeah. Kind of dressed in work clothes, but hiding down there. Hiding because she doesn't, she she doesn't want to go back. She doesn't want to face the reality around her. And I skipped over a scene. um, Blackjack, there was a a, a card game that she went to that was led by rivets. Who's the head of maintenance uh, and the maintenance ponies are super suspect of the overmare. They do not trust her. There's a new overmare in town. Apparently a um, hundred years prior, there was a serious issue where much of the stable and, revolted like an incident. Yes. And so they've been trying to avoid that. But the problem is, is that they're headed straight into another one. Another one. Yeah. It's, it's very clear that there's big fighting back and forth. And in fact, the overmare is making requests that um, blackjack's mother as the head of security is pushing back saying, we can't do that. No. You can't just round up ponies. No. You know? For, for, for breaking what rules? Yeah. You know? And this they already have severe cur- strict curfews and all this other limited and ration stuff, so. Yeah. So anyways, while she's down in the maintenance tunnels, which we also find out that it's hard to track the ponies on their pit bucks in the maintenance tunnels, um, she comes across a room that is unlocked. Yep. A maintenance room that should be locked. Mm -hmm. Um, She even thinks like there's no way rivets would ever leave this door unlocked. And she goes in and comes across uh, another maintenance pony, or at least dressed as a maintenance pony um, and inquires, asks, what are you doing in here? What are you looking for? Because this pony is literally rummaging through boxes and looking for supplies and stuff like that. And essentially there is a back and forth. And then it comes to light that this is the P 21. Yep. This is the P 21 in disguise. Yep. And he tries to run away, which though, uh, Blackjack may not be able to cast manacles. Blackjack is really good with her coyote stick. Yep. And she basically hovers it out and sweeps his legs out from underneath him. Mm-hmm. And then jumps on top of him to hold him down. And he's just literally curled up in a ball crying. Yeah. Like, oh, just a waste. Yeah. Because he's like, why, why don't you just beat me? Just kill me now. Just kill me now so I don't have to face whatever's right. coming. He sees that as more merciful. So anyway, she carries him out and runs into Daisy and Marmalade. Marmalade Marmalade is kind of like, so Daisy's the big evil bully and Marmalade is kind of like the soft headed underling. Yeah. Like Marmalade seems kind of simple. Yeah. You know, just a follower. Yep. Because there's even an altercation and Marmalade's like, but I thought we were friends and Blackjack's like friends. You've picked on me for years or at least you've watched others pick on me for years. Yeah. You aren't anything to me. If this is friendship, it sure as shit ain't magic. Okay. Um, but anyway, well, you can tag that on the book. <laughs> if this is friendship, it sure as shit ain't magic. Uh, what a golden gem. And so anyways, on as she is escorting P21 out to, you know, lock him up to get him retired or whatever, because the it, it's a medical pony that has to do it and they're not going to be awake until the morning. Yep. So they got to put him somewhere safe. 
She runs into Daisy and Marmalade. And Daisy and Marmalade are like, oh, look, there's a P21. Hey, Marmalade, I think he's resisting arrest. And she's like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And, and so then they, they start beat the shit out of him. Yep, break his leg. Um, yeah. Pretty much raise a whole bunch of welts. Yeah, and they're trying to kill him. Yep. They are literally trying to beat him to death. And um, Blackjack's like, what are you doing? Yeah. And they're like, what are you going to do? Go cry to mommy about it? And so she takes her uh, uh, her coyote stick and uh, cracks them over the head. Yeah. And dives into them. And really, she beats the shit out of them. Yep. It just surprises the hell out of them. They weren't expecting it. Well, I mean, when you only have one weapon and you only have one tool, which is telekinesis and a coyote stick, you tend to be very, very good. Effective. Yeah, very effective at that. Mm-hmm. Um, so basically they get to a standstill uh, but I think it's because there's an announcement over the radio that distracts them yep. where everyone's being called back to the Overmare or at least certain security mayors are being called back to the Overmare um, so she decides to go ahead since this is chaos to escort P-21 back to the security station mm-hmm. and there's other shit going down Yep. Um, there's going to be some details that I forget here but so when they get back uh, and P-21 is in a bad way actually am i forgetting the part where they give him some healing i think she gives him healing immediately yeah and scotch she has scotch tape go find a first aid kit yeah and it's good because scotch tape feels like she's doing something and helping yeah and they you know gives him healing potions but his legs broken yep and and no healing potion is going to like make that no you have right. to reset it and then actually give him a standard healing potion i think what they give him is morphine yeah, we well, are right. The, what, they, what do they call it? Medex. Yeah, Medex, which is their version of, it, but it's highly addictive. Oh well, yeah, it's mor- it's morphine because they had to change the name from morphine to Medex because Australia wouldn't let Fallout Three be, be released, whereas in Germany wouldn't let Fallout Three be released if it was called morphine. Because it's drug use, Chris. And if you if you show drugs in game, people will get addicted. You know, what? that's how it works. I'm just saying they took away my um my uh, uh my lottery not my lottery machine my uh, what do you call it. Oh, uh, slot machine. Slot machine in Pokemon. Yeah. All the subsequent versions of Pokemon don't have that anymore. Yeah, because, because you know what? You shouldn't be teaching children gambling. Yeah, loot boxes, however. A-OK. Oh, that's totally fine. Totally okay. Yeah. Monthly subscriptions where you don't know what you're going to get in the box, that's totally fine. Yep. All right, moving on. So shit's going down with the Overmare. Uh, she thinks everybody's out to get her, and because she's a Looney Tune. Yep. She is fucking insane. And we see she, that in a in a um, interaction she has with B twenty one, yeah, where she just goes into this weird nutso kind of like doll dom kind yeah. of weird thing. Oh, we had so much fun, didn't we? Oh, we're gonna have so much fun oh, now that little, you're back, my little pony. And he's like, oh, and she fuck. is like this like prim proper pony that was raised perfectly protected by the Overmare her entire life. Mm-hmm. She always had the best dresses and her hair and makeup and everything was perfect. And her mom died, and you start to kind of start to think that maybe she killed her. Yeah. Uh, but she is just that classic, like, ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, she's like the end game of Velvet Remedy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, that's what Velvet Remedy really would have become. Thought of the Wasteland. <laughs> Somebody had to say it. Oh, uh, talk about a thought crime. Thought crime. Yeah. Does that mean Little Pip is Thought Patrol? Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. All right. Got to pay your taxes. Gotta pay your taxes. I'm just saying, if you're an internet thought and you're watching this, pay your taxes. That hose taxes. Yeah. You know? Anyway, moving on. So back and forth, we go around this thing that they're trying to look for. Right. It's a file. It's a file. Something. Something important. EC-1101. Yeah. And they don't know what it is. And it is secret and it is safe. But we do learn that the Overmayor, the reason she's so obsessed with this file and asking all the network security ponies and the computer ponies to take to take to try to find it for there, because is somebody is asked for. Somebody on the outside has contacted her and said, hey, a this rep- is Stable Tech. Yeah, a representative of Stable Tech. Stable Tech calling. Who knew all of the Stable Tech codes. Yep. All of the appropriate signals that you're supposed to give to say that mm-hmm. I really am a representative of Stable Tech. Yep. And so she thinks that she's lost control of her stable and that she'll bring Stable Tech in to help her recapture her control. Yeah, because, because it's obvious she, that she's losing control. That's part of her position is that she's neurotic and paranoid. She is a power-hungry psychopath. Yep. So really, well set for politics. Yeah. You know, if you're a power-hungry psychopath, I think you have a Especially if you have narcissistic undertones. Oh, well, I mean, that's a given. Yeah. Absolutely, that's a given. Um, so anyways, so she takes her little patrol to go do some fucked up shit, you know. Yeah. Go start rounding people up because they think Rivets is going to have a revolt. And she's right because that's what they're planning to do. And basically, um, P-21 
P21, with the removal of his pit buck, motions to Blackjack that there is something important on that pit buck. Yep. To transfer the data. Mm -hmm. And seeing this, uh, um, Blackjack immediately does, like, is data dumping everything off of his pit buck. Yep. Um, But the overmare wants his pit buck because she knows that there's something on that pit buck that needs to be destroyed. Yep. And takes it before the data transmission can be completed. Mm -hmm. Now, Blackjack is not a pit buck technician. And I think Somber makes uh, an important point to, to point that out. To really distinguish Blackjack from Little Pip. Yep. I mean, one is a security pony. One is a Pip Buck technician. They're totally different. One is different. gray. One is right. One and, is white. Uh, They're monochrome, but it's completely And different. Blackjack isn't described as being undersized, but she is described as having a compact horn. Cute little horn. A compact horn. Yeah, so there's a lot of similarities, obviously. But, uh, but you know, if you enjoyed Fallout Equestria... And you wanted to fall into a story or be lured into another story, having a protagonist that's not super great at things, you know, the downtrodden, who uh, literally downtrodden, uh, is is and, and has the potential to grow. You're going to pick a, a weakling character, the underling, yep. you know, the person who grows into the hero they want to be. Absolutely. So, anyways, uh, in communicating with P21, uh, I'm trying to remember. Does Blackjack get locked up as well? Yeah, she yeah. gets she gets put in the cell with P21. Uh, the overmare is like on to her. She's like, you are your mother's daughter and I don't trust her. So I can't trust you. Yep. And I'm going to lock you up. Mm-hmm. Uh, but fortunately for her, P21 keeps a lock picking set in the usual place. His tail. His ass. His ass. His ass. Well, it's the same as the tail. Slides right out his asshole. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyways, gross. Uh, really gross. Uh, even more upsetting is Blackjack. As kinky as Blackjack is, Blackjack's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, now I know how you got into the maintenance closet. I also want to know exactly what it feels like if you messed up when you put it back in. Um, well, and it's an earth pony. Yeah, like, how flexible is he? Which means he's just going to jam it right back up in there and hope it didn't poke anything. Ow. Uh, but in, in between, we also learned that um, that the reason the reason for duct tape's early retirement was in fact because she was schmoozing with p21 and taking p21 away from the overmare oh yeah yeah well and knew too much knew too much she figured out too much and so the overmare was making all sorts of now we're getting this through audio logs yep that but we're kind of skipping a step because eventually all that stuff has to be decoded yeah but it doesn't matter she gets to it's midnight who decodes it we'll get to that in a minute but essentially um duct tape you know, P21 was actually the father of Scotch Tape. Yep. And so she's always had an affinity for him. It's that motherly, you know, you are the father of my child. And so the Overmare has filled her head with all these promises of we're going to open up. We're going to go outside. Everything's clean. We can live normal lives. In fact, you can marry P21 and you can live as a family. And these are things that doesn't exist in the stable. They've literally just read about it in stories. Yep. It's historical fiction. And, you know, like they're not allowed to do it now because this is what we have to do. And so, of course, duct tape goes right along because she's kind of an awkward, you know, she's the lonely, nerdy type. You know, all she has in this world is her foal. Yep. And so it's easy to make promises. And uh, the overmare the whole time knew that when she knew too much that she was going to get rid of her. And that's what she did. Mm -hmm. She made it look like an accident. And who would question it? How do you question the overmare? You don't. The overmare knows all. Mm -hmm. The overmare gives all. So... To decode the information that is on the pit buck, Blackjack finds Midnight. Mm-hmm. Because Midnight is a pit buck technician and should be able to decode all the information. Um, however, when Blackjack bursts into Midnight's room, she is in the middle of her queue with one of the uh, the uh, male ponies. Yeah, I think it was uh, P18 or something like that. Yeah, But anyway, he, he says, well, I didn't know I was scheduled for a double. <laughs> Lude. Yeah, well, I mean, and they're just they're just used for sex. Yeah, that's all they are. And again, we should also say P21 this whole time is just being really aggressive. And you don't understand me. You mares don't understand. You're all the same. All you mares, all you think about is sex. I'm just a sexual object to you. Which I'm just a piece of meat. Which is not incorrect. <laughs> no, it's not incorrect. Uh, they are definitely treated like a piece of meat. Yeah. They are treated as, oh, 
Ooh, it's a lot of meat. That's all I gotta say. Mm. It's a lot of. I meat. love Quick Time Harch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good times. Uh, History of the World Part One. That's a good one. You yes. should go check it out. So, where do we go from here? Catch. I've been talking a lot. Okay, so from when we go there, we actually realize that there's more going on than we initially realized, and something is going mm. go, going to go down. Of course, right as we learn, something is going to go down. We learned that something is going to go down at precisely what time was it? It was like one o'clock. Yeah. And they look at the clock and it's like, oh, it's one twenty-two. Oh shit. Bum, bum. Which is roughly the sound that you hear coming from the front of the stable. One twenty-two in the morning and nothing's well. Effectively. Mm, Did I just... warn y'all that the C word is in this book a lot? Yes. Like a lot, a lot. Yeah. Like. We're not going to say it on this show, but it was so much that I thought about naming this first episode the C word. Yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah, there was somebody at the door, and the crazy ass overmare opened the door, and what do you know? It's a bunch of fucking raiders. Yeah. Surprise. But we find out about the raiders because they walk into a room where there's ponies that have literally been eaten and torn apart and mm -hmm. murdered and blood everywhere and one of them turns around and it's described beautifully a pony with nasty hair filled with like oil muck and dirt and the yellowest teeth i've ever seen and a wild look in their eye yep. covered in scars and blood yep turns to me and looks at me like i'm dinner yep yep and uh roll for initiative <laughs> <laughs> Ah, dumb fucking ponies. Dumb fucking ponies. Yeah. Last place says heavy metal pony. Uh, yeah, this is metal as shit. Yep. Yeah. So, um, moving to the next thing, and continuing over, I, I do like, I do appreciate Somber's approach towards violence, and I want to say that at least early on, his description of action sequences, I actually, I actually like more than more than K Cat's early ones. Yeah. Um, K Cat was very descriptive, but not very colorful. I the difference say. is this pony though not a great security guard, mm -hmm. has lots of fight training. Yeah. So when she's faced with an actual situation of, oh, this person's trying to kill me, she hops right into it. Yep. Immediately is like, well, I got to defend myself and everyone else here, so you got to fucking die. Yeah. And um, there's... All right, so we're going to skip a little bit ahead because we can't go into the details of all the fights. But after the first kill, there is a realization of I killed a pony. Yeah. Even in self-defense, the punishment for if, if I did this in the stable otherwise would be severe. Mm -hmm. um, immediate recycling. You know? Yeah. Uh, or at least I'd be very uncomfortable for a long time. Um, but because she, it, her whole thing is like compartmentalize. Put it away. Don't worry. Can't focus on that. Put it away. You'll think about it later. You know, which is very much like soldier training. Yeah. Um, and the raiders themselves, the first couple don't have guns, but eventually they come across raiders who do have guns. And um, her whole thing is like, well, even though we've never used guns in the stable, we train with them at the end of the day every day. Yeah. Which seems like a waste of a lot of ammunition, but so be it. Hey, recycled. Take all the bread, take all the casings, take all the lead, put it in the recycler, new bullets. Yeah, but I mean, you're just assuming you have an infinite supply of black powder. What is black powder in this universe? I don't know. Magic? We don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's the thing. It could be magic. One unicorn pony is just like. <laughs> wait, wait. We're going back. To, we're going back to the first season. Magic. Yeah, that's right. Magic is the greatest, uh, you know, catch-all. Yeah, it's the hand wavium of the universe. But yeah, the Deus Ex Pony. Deus Ex Pony. Speaking of the Deus Ex Pony, who do we mean? Which one are we going to talk about? Deus. Deus. Yeah, of course. Well, well, th there's 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 a lot of fighting down below. A lot of ponies that we had met previously are dismembered and killed, and even the foals. Like, yeah, they, they don't fucking care. The younglings. Yeah, not the, the younglings. Not Andy. the younglings. But then we meet Deus, and he is just like, so he is a in Steel Ranger armor, but does not appear to be like any Steel Ranger we've met before. No. Um, also, apparently, does not have a shielding over his genitals. No. Uh, which are quite proud. Mm -hmm. um, oh, also, the raiders are just like raping and pillaging. But there's not just raiders. There's not just crazy raiders. There's also mercenaries. There are well-armed and clean individuals in this group who seem much better trained than the more rabid. organized, uh, more communicative, definitely more attentive. And we start hearing 
murmurs amongst those of several of them knowing more than others. Mm -hmm. Um, In fact, there are two that are talking about like, I don't know why the boss called in all these fucking animals to come, you know, kill. And it's like, Hey, everybody in the stable is going to die, you know? Yep. Uh, Cause they see it as just resources. It's just pure resources. And there, something in that file is something that they want. Yep. Um, Which obviously we'll find out much later in the story. Uh, Somebody here said, uh, yeah. Is that as Lex or as Tex? I can't see that font. As Tex. As Tex. As Tex says Frank Horgan in pony form. And absolutely. He represents that. Except he's not a Pegasus pony would be the only thing because of the enclave. But yeah, he's basically big brute, mean steel ranger type. Um, dangerous yeah um oh and he's armed to the teeth absolutely like, n- rocket launchers and and gatling guns and yeah very, like very frank he's very heavily armed mm-hmm. um he's not just your standard steel ranger he is a heavy armor steel ranger uh and he is mean and says the c word a lot yep um and basically he and his underlings have raped the overmare just really obliterated her yep it's like we went from a, a two to a ten real quick in the story um, but they figure out that they want this file. Yep. And uh, Apple, not Applejack, Blackjack. I keep saying like Little Pip or other, there's other names that keep jumping to mind. But Blackjack um, knows that they want this file and has to find a way to get them out of the stable. Yeah. They can close the doors if they can get these guys out of the stable. Um, and in this way, it reminded me a lot of the chaos at the end of Fallout 3. Or at the beginning of Fallout 3. Yeah. Where there's chaos and you have to leave the stable. Yep. Uh, have to leave the vault. Mm-hmm. And you can't come back. Whereas, uh, you know, in the first Fallout game, you leave, but you're leaving to find a Gek. Yeah. To save you. Yeah. But the the understanding is that you'll come back. Yep. Uh, whereas this reminded me a lot of Vault. Um, was it 101 yep. from Fallout 3? Yeah. Because it was Vault 111 from yeah. Fallout 4. It's hard to remember sometimes where all the vaults were in each of the games. Some are more memorable than others. Mm-hmm. Uh, and similarly to 101 and 111, this is 99, stable 99. So kind of close in number. Uh, anyways, uh, getting way sidetracked. So um, we come to the realization, Blackjack realizes that if I can get the file and if I can leave the stable, they'll chase me. And this whole time I've left out, P21 is in agony. Yeah, there, and she just keeps pumping him full of drugs. But like, he is going to be a burden no matter yeah. what. But he's he wants to leave the stable. He wants freedom because he knows that to stay means to die. Yeah, because they're going to kill him regardless because those are the rules. And this is a this is yeah. a stable with rules. And how dare you try yeah, to break exactly. the rules? It's going to take years for them to repopulate back up to five hundred because mm-hmm. a lot of ponies have died. As I understand, or at least as it's described, it seems like between fifty and a hundred. Yeah, but it's been a slaughter. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Blackjack comes across several different types of weapons and weapons that you can hold in the air and weapons that she or you can hold your mouth. And, you know, she's never seen anything like this because in her vault, the only people who were allowed to use weapons were unicorns. Yep. Unicorns hover things. Blackjack even mentions at one point when they're playing cards, she's like, I don't know how the earth ponies manage to hold cards in their hooves. Mm-hmm. Like she's like, because she's done everything with levitation. She never, that's the thing about unicorn ponies is that they never learn to interact with things with their hooves. Yeah. They don't, they don't, information. they don't have to. Why would you? If you could, control things with your mind why would you bother yeah um but anyways so she even comes across magical energy weapons yep and that's that was the thing like it doesn't look like a traditional um gun it just looks like a box with jewels on the front of it anyways um what does she do to distract deus hey doofus oh right well but i'm trying to remember she has to find like a secret tunnel to get back up to the security room Mm -hmm. to download the file because it's on a very specific terminal yeah and but she is able to do that and she basically we'll sum it up she gets yeah i mean yeah there's no reason to uh, to mull over the details now and she and p21 are running out and basically being having missiles fired at them as they go yep and i'm trying to remember is that where chapter one ends Mm -hmm. is then they get out of the vault yep the stable Yep. You know what I mean? And uh, similarly to Little Pip, very similar to Little Pip, the first thing she does is look up at the sky and basically get dizzy and fall over. Yeah. Like, it's just like, oh, my God. Yeah. The highest thing she'd ever been under was the atrium. Yeah. And that's what, 20 feet? Yep. Like, the idea of the infinite expanse of the sky. And, of course, nothing's all right. Everything's irradiated. It's awful. Yeah. It's still bad. And so she just kind of like, zoop. Yeah, and that's the end of chapter one. Mm-hmm. I think I think we did a good job. Yep. 
Uh, that was a lot of content. There's yeah. lots of nuances and little things we didn't cover, but you get the crux of the idea. Yeah, I don't think um, I don't think we would have enough time to really cover some of the details, but uh, some of the details are are at this point irrelevant. Yeah. Well, and basically everyone who was bad got their comeuppance. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're just bloodied and destroyed and really torn apart. And and Blackjack even mentions like looking at the Overmare, she's like, she was crazy, but she didn't deserve that. Yeah. You know, she didn't deserve that. Um which probably did. But yeah, but well, okay. anyways, I mean, she was a murderer. I mean, well, she kind of did the same thing. Let's be honest. She she kind of got just desserts. Yeah. Well, I mean, live by the sword, die by the sword. Mm -hmm. the, yeah. the meat sword. So, yeah, we're into it. We're into we it. We are now in the wasteland. Mm -hmm. And it's only going to get worse from here. Mm -hmm. It's not going to get better. Yeah. So. I don't think there's, there's something about Deus that I don't think is yet explained. But as soon as it's explained, I think we will be. It'll be a little more interesting connecting this to one of the Fallout games. Okay, looking forward to that. Yep, um, it's actually a point that I made a long time ago when uh, when it just on the sub and it actually upset a few people. <laughs> well, whatever. So we'll see. No, I mean you'll actually like it. You'll really like it. Um, so there you go. So Chris, do you know? What time it is? Uh, is it 9.02 p.m.? Yes, but in the context of where we are in life, where we are in the episode. I feel like something's coming. Oh, it's coming. And it's the second coming, even though it's the first coming of this season. Mm. Allow me to bring you on a journey down a quiet little creek. A little babbling brook. The little babbling book from your boyhood that you used to damn... All right, I'll get to it. <laughs> it's the Pony Pun of the Week! The Pony Pun of the Week? The Pony Pun of the Week. Chris, do you want to know what the Pony Pun of the Week is? I'm dying to hear it, and I'll probably die once I do. Your Pony Pun of the Week for the very first episode of Project Horizons is... Difficult. Difficult. Quit being so difficult. Yeah, the act of a a a a difficult cult. Stubborn there, to the end. There you have it. Your pony pun of the week. I'm. I hope that helped. So everybody, I believe this is the top of the episode where we do a little questions here. We take a little sippy poo of the wine at Crins, and you ask us uh, any questions or things that you think we missed or should cover. Uh, things you want to see in, uh, we didn't talk about in the chapter. Maybe some ideas that you have, some reflections you have, or just warnings of run. Don't keep reading. It only gets worse. Now, if I speak now or type now or forever you hold your peace. I, I suppose I should say that everyone had so worked this up that I don't know what to think. Like, I like it you're this in far. The, you're in the first chapter. I know, but I mean, but I like it this far. I think Somber's a good writer. Mm hmm I've read a lot of shitty fan fiction. I mean, like a lot of shitty fan fiction. My my immortal was just like the apex there. That is that's pretty. But you uh, had to read it to the end. That's that's pretty good. All right, first question from Nawat. How would you rank up the first chapter versus the first chapters of the other two books? Hmm. Interesting. One of these chapters is way longer than the other two, so you almost kind of have to take. The first three chapters of Fallout Equestria to equal the length of this. Well, no, wait, let's just go off the literal. Let's go All off right, the first chapter. Pure first chapter. So, pure first chapter, I don't think little Pip gets out of the stable. She does. She does at the end of the first chapter. Mm -hmm. Okay, I thought I thought that was a two chapter affair, but it's been a while since I've read that book. Yep. Um, I think we actually left off at the same place. Um, I think the end of chapter one is actually when she meets the guy and is like, hey, um, and he, like she un ungags him and he says, get out of here, you idiot. Yeah. And that's the end of chapter one. Mm. Of the three, probably the weak one would be um, Pink Eyes. Oh, definitely. I mean, I hate saying that. I hate saying that so well, quickly, but at the same time, it's because in, in Pink Eyes, we saw Mimzinga's like, talent as a writer grow. Sure. And so the er early well, on the things, weakest. That's one of the things I talked about. It's like, by the end of the story, like it was so much, so much more improved. Mm -hmm. And the direction of the story, even though he had an idea of where he wanted it to go all along, um, the first one is, is shaky. <laughs> There's just so much more that happens in this one than in um, Fallout Equestria. Mm -hmm. And I also think it's easier to build upon what's already there 
So I guess what I'm saying is a roundabout way that I think this was the best first chapter of the three yeah. stories. I would agree with that because in Fallout Equestria, we're, we're dealing with uncharted territories, and I'm left at the end of, of the first chapter more curious about what's going on than yeah. I am ready for more. Yeah. And it's not until, I would say, chapter three of, um, I think it's chapter three of... Fall to Equestria, because it comes a lot sooner than I actually thought it did, yeah. is when they actually get out of, when she and Calamity es escape the uh, the first uh, stable they go into. Mm -hmm. The one with the chimeras mm -hmm. in it. Yeah. When they left there, I was ready and hooked into that book, and I said, I want all of it now in mm -hmm. my face. And you had to wait. No, no, I, I, I read it. I actually read it after it, after it was finished. Oh, you did? Okay, yeah. sorry. For some reason, I thought you picked it up mid-story. Oh, no. uh, somebody says, Aztec says... Um, Mime Zing is going to remember this. this. These are things we said when we read the book. We've talked yeah. We've talked to him about it. Yeah, he um, even said so in the interview, I believe. I love Pink Eyes. Yeah. I would read the book again. I recommended, I'm having my wife read this book now because she needs to read it. Yeah. Um, and we, Chris and I promised to do an audiobook version of Pink Eyes, which we are going to do. We, we love the story. Yeah. But you asked, it's like asking, it's a Sophie's choice. You asked a mother to choose her favorite child. Yeah. And... Of the three, well, and obviously this be... one's this one's it's not fair in a way too because Project Horizons Chapter One is what's so fresh in our mind. Well, I just read I think it. you. I think um, you also asked us to pick our favorite child based on a single tiny metric, which is sure. the first chapter. Yeah, I was going to say, like, and that's that's the other thing too is is like, how do you pick between Pink Eyes and Fallout Equestria? They're such different stories. Yeah, they're different stories. They're very different, and mm -hmm. they're for different moods. Yeah. You know, there's themes in Fallout Equestria that, as like I said, with Pink Eyes as a parent, didn't hit a chord with me. But Pink Eyes had me fucking bawling. Oh yeah, you know what I mean? Oh, I mean there was Steel Hose, right? Which well definitely made me sad. Yeah, um, made you feels. And the ending, especially oh, God, as ending. Little Pip begins to realize that she might be a descendant. Yeah, of Steel Hose. Yeah, and the as Apple Snack with and, two C's. He's a snack. Yeah. <laughs> um. And the ending, good God, the ending yeah. of that story is just, God, it tugs at your heartstrings. Yeah, of uh, Fallout Equestria? Yeah. Yeah, but L Little Pip still gets her happy ending. You know, kind of. Well, because there's the um, the epilogue. Oh, no, I know. It's just without that epilogue? Yeah. Oh, God. No, sure, it's heavy. Yeah. It's heavy. Um, so, but, move. but, without great sacrifice. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's move on to the next question. Any plot predictions? So, I can't do that. Yeah. Because I've technically already listened to the first four chapters. Yeah. I'm going to move to move I it. had a road trip. I was listening, and I got hooked. I'm going to be honest. I got hooked. I'm like, and we're not doing the first four in the first episode no. because that would take us way too goddamn. No, no. But like, I got hooked, and I'd rather be ahead. And then what I've been doing is, before we do an episode, I'm going to re-listen to that week's chapter to be fresh. Mm -hmm. So after, I will tell you what. I will not listen ahead any further. So Please when don't. when we get to chapter four, then then I'll start making predictions. Yeah, I already have some predictions even from just the first chapter. But from what everybody said, that you basically get 20 chapters in this book, and then it's like there's a soft ending, and then everything else. See, the problem is so much of the story, in a way, without plot points, has been spoiled. Yeah. The narrative structure has been spoiled. Mm -hmm. And so I know that it just gets fucking hard. Yeah. This is a hard story. Yeah. This is a sad story. If you thought Joker was sad, <laughs> like from like this is just going to be like, I have a feeling this book is going to be very painful at times. It would not be so controversial if it was not so painful, which causes division. Yeah. Because some people are like, yeah, man, steer into the pain. Woo! Yeah. And other people are like, yeah, done. Because even bronies. Murky number seven? Right, yeah. Uh, Poor Murky. Old, um, is Murky what they're covering on? Yes. Yes, okay. Uh, if you like our... Hold on, we still have more questions. Oh, we do have more questions. Yes, okay. we do have more questions. Well, I wasn't going to wrap up the show. I was just going to say real quick, uh, check out Red Eye Airwave, Airwaves. That's another great group of bronies. They are all bronies. There is no non-brony in that group. And they are currently reviewing Murky Number 7. They are on our channel. So yeah. um, watch their episodes. Give them a like. You know, I know we never really ask people to like Give them some like feedback because I think, I think they're getting a little slow to get started. But I think once they actually get some feedback and some communi sure. communication, they'll actually start feeling it a little bit more and start yeah. producing a little bit I more. I think also, like... It's. I think they feel like it's weird because it's like it's our channel, but they're on it and they yeah. don't know how to engage with it. We totally support them and want them to keep oh, yeah. making their episodes because the way we see it is this channel is just a platform for people to be able to spread the kind of content that they want to make. Yeah, you know, it's one of the reasons why we throw so many things at the wall because we 
want to experiment and make different things. Yeah. Um, oh, there's going to be something else there, but continue. Okay. Yeah. So next question was for me exclusively and it said, uh, who was your favorite companion Project Horizons? Use the first initial of the character's name that is so damned difficult. Um, I'm going to have to go with the obvious M. I know it's obvious, um, but at the same time, it I mean, it kind of makes sense. Um, especially because that's where Somber was going to kind of go. So before the before the shift. So that yeah, I would definitely say that because they have the most kind of they have the most development. I would say that isn't just imparted upon them like L is. L is just imparted, and then R is just kind of a static point, which is kind of hard to explain. And you'll know when you get introduced. Believe me. Are you done now? I'm done. Um, By the way, questions... I hate to say this. Questions like that are great for the Discord. Yep. Probably better for the Discord than it is here, because then now Robert's just being like, well... Fuck L and M and R, these are just letters that I don't know anything about. But he is remembering them so that he knows to bring them up later. Yeah. Well, Be aware. never forgets. Um... Oh, yeah. Chapter one of the original ended with her walking out of the door. Okay, yeah. Um, let's see. There was a, another one on here. E Into the microphone. I'm oh, sorry. I'm trying to read it. Okay, okay. What would you like exploded or expanded? Explored. Oh, explored, explored. Or expanded <laughs> in pH that was not covered Quit much. exploding, you cowards! <laughs> or at all in Fallout Equestria. <sighs> Who, me? Yeah. Oh. Oh, I don't know. Like, it, it's not the same for, like, it, I don't know. It would have been cool to see more of, like, on, like, Pegasus Society. Yeah. We really didn't get a lot of exposure to that. It's like, hey, man, it's sort of okay to be cool here. Uh, not cool. It's cool to be gay here, you know, because, like, you know, you're less of a burden on the system. Yeah. But, anyways, I, it would have been interesting. Uh, because they're the big bads with the most technology. Yep. And we really don't hear much about what Pegasi are doing after the fall. Yep. And that'd be interesting because here is a people of basically they're all Hitler youth and now they're brought back into society. No, really? I know. I know. Yeah. It's just interesting. You went there yeah. of all places. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me how I'm wrong. You're not. I yeah. actually, is it weird? That There's I've tons actually, of parallels between the enclave and the Germans in world war two. Is, is it weird that I've actually, I uh, actually did at one time meet somebody who was actually in uh, the Hitler youth. No, it's not weird. It's just, it's like, some people are like, what? <laughs> we had a Pope who was in the Hitler Youth. It's If you were a child in Germany, you were in the Hitler Youth. Yep. Basically. I like the Boy Scouts. You know, no, that's not very fair. In Germany, not everyone were Nazi Party members. Yeah. It's just like... Well, no, it's just it's it's very likely that if you met somebody from that time, it's very well possible that they were in that. That they were in that, so... Oh, and what? Wait, hold on. I'm very confused. Chris, you hit the nail on the head. Hmm, maybe the regular Fallout questions if you were in the fallout world what would be your go-to gun secondary weapon and melee unarmed also what armor pig iron on his hip not pig iron big iron pig iron too pig iron is another term for that same you know yeah, yeah a hog's leg yeah uh that'd probably be but that'd be my side piece I, i've i've always liked being a sniper I yeah. like I like long rifle. Yeah, it's it's really a world <laughs> which which really beckons to having a hunting rifle yeah. or a fifty cal. I don't want to be anywhere near what's trying to hurt me. Yeah, and you don't want to because guess what? Death claws can close range like fucking badass. And then armor. I mean, everybody knows that I love the Brotherhood of Steel and the Brotherhood of Steel. Yeah, and Applejack's Rangers. Um, there's just something about that that's like I can't. It's iconic. I would like. Just People complain about like, oh, why is the Brotherhood in every story? And it's like, it's literally the logo for the, like, that's what you see, either that or the Enclave armor on front of all of the games. Mm -hmm. The power because armor is just It's fucking cool, man. Yeah, that's I would, why. I would definitely go with like the, what they called the X-01, but just the Enclave power armor. Yeah. Ooh, um, the original the Tesla armor. That's the one I would want. Or, no, God, the Hellfire armor. Yeah, the that one that had that weird sloping hood. Yeah. Um, no, I would actually go with the bird armor. The, the enclave bird armor because then I could just go up to anyone and say, what are you going to do about it? Mutie. <laughs> uh, so are there any other questions? Yeah. I mean, uh, what, here's one. Like what would your job, Chris, in the wasteland be? My job? Yeah. Your job. If you were in the wasteland, you'd have to do something for a living. What would it be? Scavenger. Scavenger. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'd be effectively a stalker. Yeah. Interesting. 
Maybe I could be a bard of the wasteland. Riot armor, am I a joke to you? Technically, if I could have any armor and that's inside, outside the games or whatever, it would be the um, it would be the Fallout Overhaul kits um, medic power armor because the because the medic power armor was severely nerfed in Fallout Three and apparently was to have more to it. And in the this one mod, they actually updated the the thing to where it would actually figure out what com- what combat you're going into and give you the appropriate drugs. For anything. That's cool. You were hurt, Medex. You were really hurt, Stem Pack. Yeah. You were walking into radiation, Radex. You had too much radiation, Rad away. You were going into a you were going into a fight with melee, you needed jet and yeah, all of yeah. it. It just it just pumping you full of drugs. Pumping you full of drugs. Constantly. Because you'd be like steel hooves. Yeah. That's effectively what Steel Hooves power armor was, was mm-hmm. the medic power armor. Yeah. Um, Chris, I can't remember, but do you think someone helped the Overmare kill duct tape? Um, it's possible. I mean, I don't know. I, mean, I feel like it's my the Overmare's gonna... conniving, but she doesn't actually seem particularly effective at what she does. Yeah, she's not competent. Uh, for me, that just it's just so adorable as an AI. Oh, yes, yeah, you, you might want to read the whole comment for people yeah. listening. Uh, he just says stealth armor for me, it's just so adorable as an AI. Yeah. Yeah, like Chinese stealth armor? Yeah. Interesting. Everybody wants to be invisible or be Daisy able to got fly. Daisy probably. Yeah, probably Daisy. Yeah. Daisy's dumb enough to listen to anything that it is told to her and believe it full horse. Sure, why not? Full horse. I, I heard you. Yeah. I heard you. I said full force the first time. I had to correct myself. So, I believe that is all for tonight. We've gone on for a little longer than we usually have yeah. an episode. Yeah, but, but we, had, we had a big chapter. Lots to catch up on. Oh, yeah. So, moving forward... We should be doing these once a week, mm-hmm. the day to change, because our schedules change. Yeah. Just how it rolls. Um, yeah. Check yeah. out our Discord. Join us there. Yeah. We have an email, cbpbch at gmail.com. Yeah. We also have a Patreon and a subscribe star. So if you don't like Patreon, uh, feel free to use the subscribe star. Um, but there's all the, all the funds <clears throat> are going to go towards like show stuff. It's not going to go towards anything right. personal. I mean, the, the reason you're hearing the echo in the room is because I'm just having to save up for padding. Yeah. And um, it's, it's going to be We well. record on a webcam. We've been paying out of pocket for the server costs for like three years now. Yeah. So $15 a month times every yeah. month. And once I get a server go up and going, I mean, that would kind of help with the server costs because I feel like that's part of it. It can help be part of the but channel. We're not, and part of we, are, we're doing. we have never been. We're not going to be like PBS. You know, for just pennies a day, you can help support whatever. But if you like the show and you could spare a dollar a month, every just a little bit would, would help. Yeah. Um, because we're going to make this because we enjoy it and we love hanging out with y'all. But every and we're going to keep bit, making it regardless. That's so what I mean. As though yeah. You're, yeah. We're not bilking you for anything. Um, but any of that kind of support helps us better stuff and be able to do more things. And particularly here's a little incentive. Uh, Chris here wants to set up a server as yep. he's mentioned on the discord for us to be able to play games and hang out and do more stuff together without needing all the other, like we, we would be the host. Um, and every little bit like that would help us make that a reality to have a dedicated server for us to all hang out on. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, I do believe it is that time. Yep. So, so for Chris, I'm Robert. This has been the Foley of Man Season 3 Project Horizons, and we will see y'all next Next time. time. Yeah, look at that. Synchronized. Bye, guys. Gals. Mares. Colts.